Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family Channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi. Today, again, a beautiful walk and talk here on the beach in Phuket, Thailand. Uh, I have five amazing Bitcoin charts. I have a trading tip. I have a travel tip. I have some live advice. I am answering a question of one of the followers and huge news about crypto.com, but also about Biden. So let's quickly jump into the charts first to see what is happening to Bitcoin, because all of you, congratulations, Bitcoin is already at 57k now what are we gonna do i am gonna show you on the charts Bam. the first chart is of course showing you this amazing bitcoin 57k we touched 57k uh, beautifully here with that quick we even went to 57,600 us dollar as a high and now at the price at 56,900 us dollar yeah of course the market needs to cool off a little bit after such a huge sprint of course uh, also signed here by the buy signal at the bitcoin family trading setup that would be a beautiful trade i think a lot of the members i even saw people posting 50% profits uh, with that trade guys so beautifully done again by the Bitcoin family um, indicator setup beautiful 57k uh, when 60k that's the question now of course everybody wants to see Bitcoin at 60k I think it will take a couple of more days maybe a week that we could reach uh, 60k to 61k and from that moment 61k yes I believe we can see a healthy retracement a healthy pullback will it be like only 10% or 20% so back to 50k levels we don't know yet. We need to see how bullish the market is and how much liquidity is going to be there every day again, again by the spot ETS. Because again, yesterday was, I think, $600 million worth of Bitcoin bought by all those companies uh, combined. So the moment they keep buying this kind of volume, it's very difficult for Bitcoin to retrace. Because every time when Bitcoin wants to retrace, there will be a lot of buying pressure being bought up because of the spot ETS, because of the banks, because of the governments, and because of the retail investors. So the buying pressure is still very big and I don't see people yet wanting to sell. At least definitely not the spot ETS because they always buy for the longer term. Let's check some other charts. I found this chart on Twitter, a uh, really interesting chart because it is showing you a longer cycle than the normal four year cycle we're thinking about uh, in Bitcoin. This is showing you a cycle from 2011-12 all the way to 2025-6, which would mean that we are now in that part of the cycle before a massive run, but also before a massive crash. So we could go up to a few hundred K per Bitcoin in 2025, 26, but this chart is showing us that we will fall back to these levels around 50K again in 2029, 30. And it will be a long bear market after that. So we had a very long bull market from 2020 to 2026, uh, and then again, a long bear market. So this is a different way to look at crypto. Um, I don't see this yet happening, let's see, because normally I just believe in the four-year cycle. The four-year cycle always plays out. So I don't see why the four-year cycle would be any different than normally, but I just want to show you what other people are thinking as well. As you can see on this chart, the volume yesterday in um, the spot ETF market was more than 2.5 billion. That's the highest day till now. And you can see that every day there's a shitload of volume created on these spot ETFs, guys. So just imagine what will happen when the Bitcoin spot ETF will become popular among all the investors. Because they will be comparing it to all the other assets. And they will be seeing that Bitcoin has a 22% profit already from the moment they started in. And all the other assets have like 0.5%, 2% or 3%. So Bitcoin is outperforming the whole asset market out there tremendously. Investors will see that. They will all FOMO in. They just want to make that shitload of money that all their, co that all their colleagues and friends are making. They're all making 22% in a month. They don't want to make 0.6% or 5% in a month. They want to optimize the capital. So they will be FOMOing in into these spot ETFs. Exactly what we shouldn't be doing at the moment. We are already in since the bottom. Then we have a beautiful chart showing you that uh, normally the halving is the moment that the RSI goes over 70. The monthly RSI is a monthly chart. And we can see the first BTC halving completely on the left. The monthly RSI is where the blue dot appears on the chart. That is when we cross 70, after the halving. Then again in 2016, after the halving, we crossed that line 70. And the blue dot appeared and that was a run all the way up to the bull market top. Then again, in 2020, after the halving, the blue dot. 
the RSI crossing the 70. Again, from that moment, massive run. You can see it on the top over there. Now, the monthly RSI is almost already passing that 70 line. This is before the halving. The blue dot is already on the chart now because we are very close to passing the RSI line of 70 with that RSI signal line. And that means that the bull market could propel into massive heights already from before the halving. So this time is a little bit different. And a little bit different, we are talking about a few days or a week, but look to the left. It was every time a little bit different. The first dot on the first cycle was almost at the halving. The second dot was a little bit later than the halving. The third dot was way more later than the halving. And this one could be a little bit earlier than the halving. It doesn't come to a day, but it shows you one thing clearly, that green box on top there, on the right side of the chart, is going to be filled up with beautiful candles that will show a new all-time high in Bitcoin. It could be between 100 and 200k. Very interesting chart. You all know the Bitcoin spiral clock. I really love this chart because of the simplicity. It looks very difficult to read, but it isn't. You just need to notice on the right bottom, you can see green circles that says top. 2013 top, 2017 top, 2021 top, 2025 top. We don't know for sure the 2025 top, but if we move like we always have been moving in 2025, we'll see the top. Also, if you look a little bit to the left on the bottom, you can see all the crashes. 2011, 2015, 2018, and 2022 crash. All in line. The only difference is that the orange line is moving upwards a cycle every time again. So we're nearing now that 100k line. I believe that towards the 2025 top area over there, around 918,000 blocks, will be a new all-time high again, and it will be around that next line. Just analyze it. Every time the orange line comes closer to the next white line. The next white line is 100k. We are going to close the top near that line. The line after that will be 1 million. But that will be the next cycle, in my honest opinion. If you want to analyze this chart a little bit more, pause the video and analyze it a little bit more because it's a very interesting chart that is showing you in a very simple way that yes, the bull market tops are always in the same area of the amount of blocks that are being created. And the, and the bear market bottoms always at the same area as well. It's not difficult to understand the four-year cycle. You just need to start believing the four-year cycle. Here we can see the drawdowns, of course, uh, with massive drawdowns. The biggest ones were 94% and then 84% and then now we had 77%. So maybe the next huge drawdown to the bottom will be around 65%. But let's first see the top. We can see that the lake is being filled, the cup is being filled. The moment that we surpass at 69k, guys, the previous all-time high, we will go to in a massive sprint to a new all-time high, probably above 100k. And from the new all-time high in 2025, yes, of course, we will form another bear market. Will the bear market be 60% or maybe only 50 or 40% because now all these long-term investors stepped in? We don't know yet. We can only analyze the charts and towards that moment, that the bear market normally should appear, we will analyze the charts and we will take a look at what is happening. Are they selling? Are they holding? Is a new liquidity coming into the market? We don't know yet if the game has changed. We don't know yet if the four-year cycle has changed. We will need to wait and sit it out. Just enjoy this beautiful bull run and make sure you're not missing out. Make sure you are investing in Bitcoin. Don't skip this one. Please dollar cost average into Bitcoin every dip. I hope you really enjoyed those charts, guys. Yes, uh, of course, in the short term, we can see some volatility coming up. We can see Bitcoin going even to 61K maybe. And from 61K, maybe we can pull back another 10 or 20%. As you've seen in the charts in yesterday's videos, like these 20% pullbacks during a bull market are, due, are just very healthy retracements. So if we would see a 20% pullback from 60K, for example, to 50k back there's a healthy retrace that's nothing with a crash nothing to do with a dip nothing to do Bitcoin is going to the zero nothing going to do with oh this was the bull market up it's just a healthy retracement that's what happens you saw it in yesterday's video a lot of these happened in 2017 six of them a lot of these happened in 2020 four of them so also this bull market already we had three healthy retracements of 20 percent and yes we can have a few more but that doesn't mean that Bitcoin will stop going up. That's why you need to always zoom out in Bitcoin. Look at that bigger picture. 
look at those other charts, what they are telling you. They are telling you that the top will only be in in 2025. There is a shitload of upward potential still possible for Bitcoin. So for me, I will keep dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin all the way to the halving and see what kind of level Bitcoin is at that moment. I don't see a top coming this year. I only see a new all-time high coming this year, which means we will go higher than 70k. But that doesn't mean that will be the top. In my honest opinion, the top will be in 2025, just like every four-year cycle, somewhere around 17 to 18 months after the halving. I don't see anything different. Yes, more volume. More volume than normally. We are breaking a lot of all-time highs in, for example, the realized cap already before the halving. That is what we normally not do before the halving, normally after the halving. But it doesn't mean that the rest of the bull market also will go and speed up. I believe still in a beautiful top, somewhere towards the mid end of 2025. Now let's jump into the trading tip. The trading tip for the day is a very important trading tip. Don't FOMO. Never FOMO into a trade. Fear of missing out. I know that you're FOMOing at the moment. I know that you're like, oh shit, I thought we could go back to 48K or maybe even to 40K because a shitload of influencers were telling us, hey, we could even go back to 30K. And I know now that Bitcoin is going up to 57k and nearing the 60k, you want to phone win. You will be like, oh no, I need to buy now. It's phone, it's going up, it's going up. I know that feeling. I have been through that feeling many times since I was in this industry since 2013. Never phone win. That's the worst decision ever. Wait for the market to cool down. Are we going to hang around at 57k? Okay, maybe then you will add to your portfolio. But always wait for the market to give you a confirmation. Maybe we will retrace 10% or even 5%. Whenever the market is pumping, don't foam win. Just wait for the market reaches a target. If it then goes sideways for some time and again goes up, of course, it's a beautiful moment to get in, but don't foam win. We can always see a beautiful, healthy retrace and that healthy retrace would lead then to you buying Bitcoin at cheaper levels. It's very important that you dollar cost average all those dips. You don't foam win to the top. If you foam win, you will lose a lot of your capital. You wait for the retracements, for the dips, you dollar cost average into those dips. Yes, my eyes wasn't to that part of the screen and you know why. <laughs> I'm foam win in, no. <laughs> so it's very important to understand, never foam win, always wait for the market to give you a confirmation and then you start to dollar cost average a little bit more into Bitcoin again. Don't foam, never have the fear of missing out. A very simple travel tip for the day. I don't know if there's many of you that has this motion sickness when they are on the air, or on a cruise or like a boat. Uh, yes, you can take pills, but look, a very natural remedy is uh, eating a green apple or drinking ginger ale. That really settles down your stomach directly. So if you have motion sickness, always eat a green apple or drink some ginger ale. Don't ming it with alcohol, that's not the right thing to do. Just a normal ginger ale and a green apple will uh, settle your stomach down instead of all those pills. And I know a lot of people don't want to have those pills. So I think it's a very good tip for you to uh, do it in a different way than the pills. So a uh, healthy green apple or ginger ale will help you uh, against the motion sickness on boats, on airplanes, on everything else, guys. So that was the travel tip for today. Let's jump into the next one. The question today from a follower was, Didi, why are you selling something that is even more scarce than gold in 2025? Because I do believe that Bitcoin is more scarce than gold, but I want to multiply my Bitcoins. And I also know that every asset out there that has huge investment in it will have healthy retracements. So till now, every bull market that wound up massively was followed up by a 70% dip of a bear market. So if I would exchange my Bitcoin into stable coins, for example, in the bull market top in 2025, and there will be a 60 or 70% crash, I will be able to buy a shitload more Bitcoin back because I treat Bitcoin as my core capital. So sometimes I need to step out of Bitcoin, for example, here in Thailand, to buy food with Thai bath. And sometimes I will need to step out in Bitcoin and US dollar tether or any other stablecoin, DAI, for example, to multiply my Bitcoins. Because Bitcoin is my core capital. It's the opposite of what the most people are doing. Most people have euros or dollars and they sometimes step into stocks 
or sometimes step into Bitcoin or sometimes step into anything else to multiply their US dollar or their euros. So I'm doing it the other way around. I sometimes step out of my Bitcoin capital to multiply my Bitcoins, not the other way around. I don't need more shit coins like euro and dollar. I am accumulating more Bitcoin. So sometimes I need to get out of Bitcoin before the crash and buy back more Bitcoins back. So just think of what you're doing with stocks. You buy the stocks low, when the stocks go up, you sell them. And why are you selling them? You're selling them because you want to multiply your euros or your dollars. I am treating Bitcoin the way you're treating euros or dollars. So that's the answer to the question. I have two news items for today, guys. The first news item is that Crypto.com is now working together with the biggest Latin America investment group, BTG. And BTG launched a stablecoin, DOL. And now Crypto.com is going to launch that stablecoin on their platform, which now means that traditional finance, a stablecoin DOL that is based on one-to-one -one ratio to the US dollar, is now being connected again through Crypto.com to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So the biggest investment company now in Latin America has now the possibilities to issue a stablecoin in Latin America and exchange that stablecoin into for example, Bitcoin through the crypto.com platform. So I think this is a huge step. I think it's a very small news item. I turned around, guys, because it's a little bit cooler in the shadow. But now just imagine that the biggest investment bank of Latin America was able to issue a stablecoin pegged to the US dollar and now is integrating it into the cryptocurrency industry through crypto.com. This means that all of Latin America will now get access in a very simple way to Bitcoin. So all the people that are using that BTG can now very simply buy Bitcoin on Crypto.com. Yes, it's regulated. Yes, it's KYC. But that is again adding more buying pressure to Bitcoin. Now it's not only the spot ETFs that all want to buy Bitcoin. It's not only the banks now that want to buy Bitcoin. It's not only retail that wants to buy Bitcoin. Now it's also Latin America's biggest investment bank clients that are able to buy Bitcoin spot, for example, on crypto.com. So you can understand that demand for Bitcoin is growing tremendously because the possibilities are endlessly to onboard into Bitcoin. It was way more difficult when I started my Bitcoin trip. I could only buy Bitcoin on really strange websites or I needed to do a local bitcoins.com transfer like peer-to-peer -peer, meeting each other or even through a, sending an envelope with cash and receiving bitcoins back. Nowadays, people just use their biggest investment banks or a spot ETF or their ideal account in the Netherlands and buy bitcoin. So the demand will be growing tremendously because the possibilities of buying bitcoins are growing tremendously as well. But you need to remember one thing. The supply will stay the same. There will only be 21 million Bitcoins and it will take another 116 years for that last Bitcoin to be appearing onto the market. The supply is not changing a bit, it's decreasing daily. At the moment, the new supply is 900 Bitcoins per day. From April, the new supply will be 400 Bitcoins a day. Four years later, the supply will only be 200 Bitcoins a day. And four years later than that, the Bitcoin supply will only, the new supply, I'm talking daily new supply, will only be 100 Bitcoins a day. And that is how the new supply will be halving every time during the halving every four year cycle. But the demand keeps growing because the possibilities of buying Bitcoin keep growing. Just understand this. You can now start to compare this to the old-fashioned gold rush. Everyone wanted to have a piece of that gold. Now, everyone will want to have a piece of that Bitcoin. So if you hold one Bitcoin through the next eight years, I believe you will be a millionaire just because you hold one Bitcoin. Just imagine you hold 10 Bitcoins or 100 Bitcoins, how rich you would become then. Still then, depending on how much purchasing power it would be, because if the dollar and all the euros and all the other fiat currencies like continue like this, of course, there will be a diminishing purchasing power because you will probably need like $50 to drink a coffee. But still, it's better to be hatched in Bitcoin and still be able to drink the coffee than not doing it and stay in fiat and never be able to drink the coffee ever again, like in eight years time because of the inflation.
So that was the first news item. We are now going to jump into the second news item that I also really liked reading about. Uh, you will love the news item as well. Yes, again, uh, all for you guys, all for you, I all for you. The second news item for today, guys, is about Joe Biden because there is now senators in the United States that are against Joe Biden's plans to create a central bank's digital currency. I am fully against a central bank's digital currency, you all know that, but now even the senators in the United States are against creating a central bank's digital currency, which is really positive for the United States, but also makes me wonder the difference now between a huge investment bank in Latin America creating a stablecoin pegged to the dollar against now, for example, the United States not creating a central bank's digital currency. What will this do to the whole economy worldwide? I don't know yet. I still need to dig deeper into it. But if you have any thoughts about this, I would really love you to comment down below. What do you think there is a difference between a central bank's digital currency created by a central bank or a single bank in Latin America creating a stable coin that's back to the US dollar? What is exactly the difference? Let me know down below. Now you can educate me. So uh, this is a serious question. This is a very serious question. I really want to understand the difference between those two things. Because in my honest opinion, any new uh, currency, like worldwide currency, should be a decentralized currency. So it should be like DAI, for example, where the community takes care of the stability of the token, not like, again, a centralized entity in between it. So the bank in Latin America is a central entity that still has control on that stablecoin. And the central bank in America, of course, is also a very centralized entity that could have influence on that stablecoin or uh, the central bank's digital currency. So let me know what you think about this. What do you think it is a solution for the whole world to create a coin or just to use Bitcoin as a world reserve currency all over the world? Let me know down below. Thanks. Coming to the end of the video, guys, of course, the inspirational quote part. Um, the quote for today is, whatever you think the world is withholding from you, you are withholding from the world. Just think about it, it's very logical. If you always blame the world for not giving you something or for you not succeeding in something or for you not having something or for you not having the capabilities or passion or finding your um, strength, you are withholding that from the world. You cannot depend on something else to give you something. You need to build it yourself. It's all up to you. You are withholding all those powers, all those strengths, all those ideas, all those capabilities that you have inside of you from that world because you're waiting for them to give it to you. You need to grab them for yourself. There is massive amounts of opportunities happening daily. You just not focus on them. You just don't see them. The moment you start to focus a little bit more on all those opportunities and you really see all of them daily, you will grab them and then you will stop withholding yourself from giving everything to that world. At the moment, you're waiting for something that's not gonna happen. It's definitely not gonna happen, guys. It's not gonna happen. It doesn't fall out of the heaven. Of course, sometimes people are very lucky, but 90% of the people needs to grab life by the balls. So you need to figure out for yourself what you wanna achieve and just grab it and just keep holding it and keep doing whatever you can to achieve that goal. Don't think that the world is withholding stuff for you. You are withholding it from the world because you're limiting yourself. You're putting there a ceiling in your salary or you're putting a ceiling in your knowledge or you're putting there a ceiling in your capabilities of changing the world. You can do way more than you're doing at the moment. So you are withholding a lot from the world. You should really change that mindset. You're way bigger than you think. You're way stronger than you think. You're way more courage than you think. You're way more beautiful than you think. You're way more powerful than you think. You have way more strength than you think. But you need to start believing in yourself. Start to believe in all those things that I just mentioned and start to set those goals, make that list of 10 goals and start to try to reach all these goals. And the moment you will start to reach all these goals, you will turn into that person that you want to become and you are not withholding from the world anymore and you won't be asking anymore, why is the world withholding everything from me? It isn't. It is never withholding everything from you. You are withholding from the world, guys. That's how it works. Just grab life by the balls or by the boobs or by the booties, whatever you want to refer to calling it. But it's very important. You start to take control. Take control in your life. Take control and you don't have the feeling anymore that they are withholding anything from you. You are withholding from them. 
that was everything for today guys i hope you really enjoyed today's video if you did enjoy today's video then please give the video a thumbs up share it with your friends and family subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell and leave a comment and please the subscribing is very important i want to reach 75k before bitcoin and bitcoin is growing quickly now so i need to really like pace up a little bit we need to get more subscribers more followers so share this message with all your friends and family at least share it with one of your friends today please mention this youtube channel to one of your friends today that will make us grow to 75k before bitcoin does now thank you for watching i wish you an amazing day and see you tomorrow again bam yes and also my view is good if i'm walking because it's not only your view that counts it's also my view that counts shake that booty